Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuang. Today, we are going to learn about the Nyctosaurus. In terms of appearance, the biggest feature of Nyctosaurus was the sail. If the sail structure was discovered in the first place, instead of the name Nyctosaurus, meaning night lizard, it might have been named as sail lizard or antler lizard. When alive, its sail didn't preserve the membrane, so the fossil only displays an antler look. However, when it was first discovered, only the front half of its head was found. Due to the lack of the sail structure, it was thought to be similar to a bat at the time. Nyctosaurus was discovered very early, when not many pterosaurs had been discovered. Nyctosaurus was one of the first found pterosaurs with a relatively complete body, so at that time people thought that its structure was very similar to that of a bat, and believed that it was also nocturnal, hence the name. However, it was later confirmed that Nyctosaurus was not nocturnal at all, but was very good at flying during the day, especially possibly come out in large numbers at dusk. Animals that rely on sight to catch fish on the sea generally require good vision, so pterosaurs were likely to be active during the day, and no pterosaurs were haunted at night. First of all, we can see that its face had a feature, that is, the lower jaw was longer than the upper jaw, which was a bit like marine animals. The back of its lower jaw had a corner with a soft skin membrane on it. While alive, the membrane might be able to unfold and hold fish like a pelican. With a relatively long lower jaw and membrane, when Nyctosaurus fished in the sea, it could close its mouth to squeeze out the seawater, much like today's pelicans. Nyctosaurus were best known for this sail. It had two antler-shaped bones on the back of its head, which were initially thought to be only a fork structure. But after a series of wind experiments, it was found that if there was a membrane between the two bones, it would be very helpful for its flight. Especially when it turned its head to control the direction, it could save a lot of effort. From the front, when Ictosaurus opened its wings, it seemed to have three wings, which is very sci-fi, especially like the fighter planes in sci-fi movies, such as Star Wars. As we've just mentioned, Nyctosaurus had another feature. When Nemecalopterus was on the ground, its forelimbs could be used for walking. Its three claws on the forelimbs were very useful when walking. However, the forelimbs of Nyctosaurus had degenerated and became very small. When it was alive, its three fingers were probably all wrapped by the skin and flesh, and only three small tips were exposed, which was very different from other pterosaurs. It also suggests that Nyctosaurus might usually fly in the sky, rarely walk on land, and even when it on land, it chose the soft sand close to the beach, so it might be a very water-dependent species. Or it had pretty thick keratins at this position, like a horse's hoof, which could help it run fast. But so far, the description of its frillims is not very clear, and we still need to wait for more scientific discoveries. This is also a charm of ancient creatures. The knowledge of paleontology we know now is far richer and more reliable than what I learned when I was a child. But maybe in another 10 or 20 years, after new theories come out, more discoveries will overturn our current research which is also the charm of paleontology, and we are looking forward to that day. The above description concludes a brief introduction about the Nyctosaurus,